yesterday we were trying to see how we could uh, implement the same CDR loop using uh, digital circuitry. That is, we have an analog charge pump and a loop filter. We want to replace that for by a digital circuit <coughs> and the VCO also. There are various levels of uh, digitization that is possible. Of course, this is now specific to the bang bang phase detector because that gives a digital output. CO generates the clock. And in this case, this is analog and then this also is an analog component. Now, <coughs> there are two possibilities. One is you replace this basically these uh, up and down or digital signals. So, you replace this with something that uh, takes in up and down and gives you some output. Okay. So, here the output is the control voltage. I just call it some digital control Y C okay. and then you can uh, connect that to a D to a converter and connect it to a VCO. Okay, that is possible, that is like partial digitization where we use a digital loop filter, but the VCO still remains. This is one possibility or uh, sometimes this whole thing can be replaced by what is called a DCO, a digitally controlled oscillator. Where the input is some DC instead of VC and the output is a variable frequency signal. There is not much difference between having a DAC and a VCO and a DCO. Uh, <coughs> in a DCO typically what you do is there is a capacitor or some component that determines the frequency and then you split that up into some binary weighted parts. So, that itself behaves like a DAC. Okay. And finally, you replace the whole thing actually. You replace this whole thing with something that takes in up and down and then gives you a variable phase variable phase clock. Okay. Now, this will need some uh, reference clock, right? it uh, does not have an oscillator in it. It takes the periodic signal from an oscillator, but it gives you a variable phase version of it. Okay. That is assume that the input is a fixed phase 10 gigahertz signal the output will be one of some n phases, one of probably 32 phases or 64 phases that can be generated. And now of course, you have a discrete number of phases and you can think of the output itself as digital. Okay. That is, if you think of uh, which phase you are picking, the index of the phase, that is a digital one. So, this is a digital input, digital output circuit. Okay. Or if you want to separate it out, we can uh, do that as we have up and down and a digital loop filter. and you have a phase selector. The phase selector receives a reference clock and gives a gives an output clock and this will be phase shifted by some <coughs> discreetly tunable amounts based on the output of the digital loop filter y. Okay. These are all different possibilities of uh, digitizing different parts of the clock and data recovery loop. Okay. Like I mentioned yesterday, the loop filter capacitor, the one that sets the 0, that tends to be quite large and it will be larger the lower the noise you want to have because the resistance has to be lower and so the capacitance has to be higher to have the same 0 frequency, <coughs> which becomes difficult to implement on an integrated circuit. This is why you, uh, there is some motivation to have the whole thing in digital. Okay. 
especially as the technology is shrinking, the digital loop filter, the certain amount of logic can be realized in a smaller area. And the capacitor, the capacitor's area does not shrink, it does not shrink or it shrinks very slightly or maybe not at all. And in relation to the rest of the stuff, it actually looks relatively more expensive because in a 100 micron square area, now you can pack more logic if you go to a final process, but then you have the same capacitor. So, this looks like even bigger waste, right, in a final process. So, that is another motivation to go to digital architectures. And especially when you have multi lane uh, structure where you may have to use a capacitor in each of the lanes, clearly uh, digital architecture is preferable, okay. And there are other benefits to digital, okay. Sometimes uh, they may be important, sometimes not, but one of the things is let us say you have a digital architecture in one process, let us say 65 nanometers, then to change it to 45 nanometers is easier because you, it's, the digital stuff is written in a high level code and the code can be translated using the lower level standard cell library which is designed by somebody else, that is the assumption of course, the standard cell library is available. Whereas, if it is an analog stuff, you may have to separately redesign it. I mean, in this case, the circuitry is not very complicated, but still, okay. So, how do we go about doing this? Let me break the loop here, okay, and look at the phase of the output clock of the VCO, okay, in response to uh, these up and down signals, okay. Let us assume that let us uh, let's say clock is lagging D in, so that is why this gives a sequence of up pulses at every transition, okay. So, what does that do? You will have up pulse because of that there will be a current pulse of uh, in fact there will be a sequence of uh, continuous sequence of current pulses right. If we assume that the input clock is lagging the input data there will be a continuous sequence of up pulses. So, the charge from current I C P will have pulses of I C P over the entire width T S continuously, okay. Now, what does that do? <coughs> it produces some voltage across R, some voltage across C. Let me call this V C, that is V control and let us look at the output phase due to V R and V C separately, okay. We know that the output phase of the V C O is 2 pi k V C O integral of V control d d, right. this is the output phase of the VCO. Now, what does V R look like in this case? Hmm? Yeah, it is a constant equal to what? What is the value? I C P times R. Okay. And what is the phase increment due to V R alone? Okay. Let us assume that V control equals only V R. What will be the output phase of the V C O? How will that change? It will be a ramp, okay, because the input is a constant, the output will be a ramp. That is, I am assuming that only V R is input to the V C O. So, the output phase of the V C O will do this, wherever it is, it will increment by equal amounts in every cycle, right. And how much will be the increment? Let us say this is the kth cycle, this is the k minus 1. It is of course, continuously increasing if we assume that phi out is a continuous quantity, but let us look at it at the end of each cycle, okay. So, how much is the increment in each cycle? It is basically 
you have to use this expression v control is a constant equals icpr okay and we are integrating over a period equals ts right that is the symbol interval so this uh, increment due to uh, vr alone we can say that phi k minus phi k minus 1 that is the phase at the end of kth period minus the phase at the end of k minus 1 period that is equal to 2 pi k v c o times this integral because v control is a constant equal to i c p r that is equal to that much right. <coughs> is this okay? So, that follows some discrete time difference equation. I will uh, come back to that. Now, again, let me look at the effect of only V c. Okay. I c p is still a constant equal to the charge from current. So, what is the capacitor voltage? what will it be? It will be a ramp okay. and it will be a ramp like that obviously a constant current flowing into a capacitor produces a ramp. What will the output phase look like? Yeah, so it will have it will be the integral of this. Okay. So, the slope will go on increasing with time. Okay. So, now <coughs> let me again it is easier to look at it from these areas uh, instead of uh, drawing the curve for uh, phi out k k minus 1 k minus 2. Okay. The phase increment between k minus 1 and k minus 2 or k minus 2 and k minus 1 is related to this area. right? is proportional to that area. It is basically equal to 2 pi k v c o times that whole area right? and <coughs> the increment between k minus 1 and k is proportional to that area. Okay. Is this fine? Now, the difference between these increments how much is that? in terms of areas basically the difference between these increments is this box right is that right because this part is the same as this triangle this part is the same as that the difference between the increase in phases basically the second difference of the phase right phi k minus phi k minus 1 that is proportional to this green area minus phi k minus 1 minus phi k minus 2 that is proportional to this blue area that is equal to this rectangle which is some fixed amount. How much is that? What is the width of the rectangle? Huh? T s what is the height of the rectangle? What is the slope of this ramp? I c p by c. So, what is the height of the rectangle? I c p times T s by c okay. and there is a proportionality constant. What is that? So just 2 pi k v c o. <coughs> 2 pi k v c o times the area under V control that is the phase increment, right. In this case, I have identified one particular rectangle which is the second difference of this phase. Is this clear? Is it okay? <coughs> I mean, I can get the same thing from expressions, but I just thought I easier from the picture. Any questions about this? So, the second difference in uh, phase equals this right 
this is the equation for the change in phase through the integral path okay through the voltage across the capacitor right this constitutes the integral path and this constitutes the proportional path if you want to think of this as a control signal control system okay Questions here? So let me write these things together. proportional path basically the phase increment in every period will be some fixed number right if you keep getting a, a constant stream of up signals and then uh, if you write this in the z domain in the discrete domain let me do this later okay In fact, this is, I assume that we have an up signal. In reality, it is basically whatever the output of the phase detector is. If I call the output of the phase detector as let us say y, this is also like that, right. And what is yk? yk is up k minus down k, okay. yk will be plus 1 if up is high, minus 1 if down is high and 0 if uh, there is no transition, okay. If you have a transition, either up or down will be 1 and only one of them will be 1 in this case, right. Yeah. Yeah. It is this basically. So, in the integral path, the voltage itself is a ramp, okay. The voltage across the capacitor is a ramp and the area under this is the increment in the phase with some proportionality constant 2 pi kvco okay now <coughs> this area you can see it is some number i mean if i just take phi k minus phi k minus 1 it will be some trapezoid okay whose area also depends on where it started with right so if i started from zero it will be just a triangle if i started from somewhere up there it is a trapezoid and so on but the difference between this trapezoid and that trapezoid is that rectangle which is fixed is that okay the control voltage V C is a ramp if you only get uh, let me also not draw it from 0 just to show the it will be some ramp okay if you assume that you get a constant uh, up input input of plus 1 okay. So now So, phi k minus 1 minus phi k minus 2 is that area okay, with the scaling factor of 2 pi k v 0, phi k minus phi k minus 1 is that area and so on. Okay. The next increment is that area. Now, it is not easy to say what that area is, it depends on the starting value here. On the other hand, I know very easily what is the difference between this blue area and the black area. What is that? that is equal to this rectangle right that is some fixed number the second difference is fixed this is not very surprising right I mean basically <coughs> if you look at it from ICP this uh, VR is proportional to ICP and this phase is 
the integral of ICP. Okay. So the first difference of that is a constant for a constant ICP. Similarly, VC is the integral of ICP and the phase is the integral of VC. So this output phase is double integral of ICP. So the second difference is a constant if ICP is constant. So the difference between this green area and the blue area equals that rectangle which is the same as the shaded blue rectangle okay? <coughs> and the area of either of these rectangles equals the slope which is ICP by C times uh, the duration which is Ts times the width which is Ts. Okay? This is the height of the rectangle and that is the width of the rectangle. So now it is very easy to uh, make the, I mean complete this. So we have our phase detector which is a binary phase detector, right. We have phi d, phi c k, I think I call this phi in and then essentially we just have a comparator, okay. Just tells you whether <coughs> this is uh, <coughs> leading or lagging, but I mean this is a special comparator you have to imagine, it has outputs of 0 or plus minus 1, it has an output of 0 if there is no transition, okay, right or you have to say effectively multiply the output by the density factor to get the average behavior because when there is no transition you cannot even make this comparison phi in minus phi c k and then the output of that goes to the proportional path. If you look at the proportional path, we have phi in the uh, z domain, z domain two pi k v c o. Sorry, this times one minus z inverse equals two pi k v c o i c p r times t s times y of z, that is all, right. Or in other words, this is the output phase of the VCO, right, phi out. So, phi out due to the resistor alone is this whole number, right, 2 pi k VCO ICPR times Ts. What is this? If you apply an input ICPR to the uh, VCO, right, its output will, uh, its uh, phase will change by this amount in a period of Ts, okay. So that is what this is and this is called uh, phi bb, it is called the bang bang phase. That is if the phase detector gives 1 plus 1 output, that is 1 up output, then over that period the phase will change by this amount. You know that the up will stay for the whole cycle, right. Once you get an up, it will stay for the whole cycle. So if you get a single up, the phase of the VCO will be changed by this amount during that cycle. So that is called FBB, I mean sorry, phi BB. Sometimes this number here, KVCO times ICP times R, what is that? Basically, if you have an input of ICP R, the VCO's output frequency will be changed by this amount, right. So it, this uh, number is known as FBB, the bang bang frequency or the bang bang phase change in one cycle, okay. When I say input 1, this is the uh, digital input of 1 from the phase detector, okay. So the output phase due to the uh, VCO alone would be Similarly, if you write this, this is nothing but phi out due to C alone. Let me also mark this uh, subscripts. The total is the sum of these two, right? 
times 1 minus z inverse square that is what this is right it is the second difference 1 minus z inverse square is 1 minus 2 z inverse minus z inverse square that is what you see right oh sorry plus z inverse square. So, phi k minus 2 times the previous one so this should have been plus not minus okay the third term is plus right because it is minus and you have another minus here that should have been plus. and that is equal to this whole number and this I will uh, rewrite it slightly as I will multiply this by r and divide it by r and what is this? What is that number? That is phi b b right and this is some ratio of T s divided by some R c time constant some dimensionless number. So, this is phi b b T s by something. I will call it tau z that is related to R c y of z. So, the phase change due to the capacitor alone I will take this 1 minus z inverse square on the right side you will get <coughs> okay. this is fine. So, now we can make a digital representation of the entire loop considering the phase of the output clock at the end of each cycle. This is still I mean we have not come to the digital implementation. This is still a model of uh, what the phase of the clock will be at the end of each cycle. So, treating the phase of the clock as a discrete time signal we will make the model. Okay. <coughs> so, so, we have this and actually one thing that we have to model is also the delay like I said there is a delay in the phase detector right in the bang bang phase detector. So, we will just quantize it to an integer number of cycles because if you measure the phase at this edge it will get corrected at best at the following edge it may be even later depending on how you implement it. Okay. So, now there is a delay of n t s. Okay. So, that is represented by So, somehow in the implementation we get a delay in fact, we have seen this while calculating the bang bang jitter right uh, you will have at least one cycle of delay because this uh, the phase measured at this edge it will be useful in correcting only the at best the next edge maybe even the one later okay. and if you do it uh, after deserialization this delay will only increase. Now, we have two paths one is the proportional path and the other is the integral path. So, I will show it like this. This part is common. We have another in integrator in the integral path. and this will be the output phase. Okay. This is what our analog loop does if you consider only the phase at the end of every uh, cycle. Okay. Now, that we have a discrete time uh, loop anyway now I can just uh, make a digital implementation of this. Right. Remember in this case this phi out or phi c k phi out I think this is what we called it. this is still a continuous quantity okay, because that can take on any value right. So, because you keep accumulating this over time it can take on any value I mean with the resolution of this phi b b f. This is okay. So, this discrete time model is also used for analysis of the CDR, but basically what we are now looking for is essentially we can in fact implement this whole thing as a digital circuit right. We will see the implementation. So, this is the output of the phase detector y 
we know that this takes an output of I, this takes values of either plus minus 1 or 0 in case of uh, no transition and we can implement the whole thing of course this z to the minus n this delay is not something you put in deliberately but that's part of the implementation but the rest of it you can make this accumulator and make that accumulator okay the only thing is right now what happens is if you look at the <coughs> look at this value right it can take on any value like this okay now in the common digital implementation what you have is the following so you have you have some uh, reference clock and somehow you generate a number of phases okay equally spaced over the whole cycle that is if you had this you would generate it just here here you get the idea right right you could generate let's say 32 phases over the whole cycle and <coughs> for now i'll just call this a phase selector somehow you generate this we we'll look at the circuits required to generate this later so you have a phase selector and you have a digital input right which will select one of these phases okay so now this is what i want to use this is by the way what i have written now is the incremental model of the uh, clock and data recovery circuit but in the discrete time as using only the values of the phase at the ends of the cycle okay what i started off was to i mean in the discrete time model i see that i have uh, essentially two integrators a proportional path here an integral path here and an integrator corresponding to uh, the vco right okay and that gives you the output phase this is fine so now i want to make a completely digital implementation so what i have to do is <coughs> the following i'll show only uh, the part of the control loop so i have the proportional path let me uh, use only the proportional path easy uh, first for simplicity so if i have only the proportional path this is what i would have right basically if y is constantly 1 the output would be output would increment by let me put it on a different axis if y is 1 then output phi out would increment by steps of uh, phi bb in each cycle right that's what this is saying isn't it so in every cycle this jumps by phi bb okay this is fine now what is uh, the value of phi bb it is 2 by kvco icpr times ts okay and what is this number kvco times icpr in the cdr it's the bandwidth in radians per second okay so <coughs> now imagine that uh, we are talking about a 10 gigabits per second system so this ts is 100 picoseconds or 1 by 10 gigahertz okay and the bandwidth could be anything in general but let's say it is like 10 megahertz okay so that means that this number itself whatever i have underlined here that is 2 pi times 10 megahertz because icp times kvco times r is the bandwidth in <coughs> uh, radians per second okay and you have 2 pi okay so basically this whole thing looks like 4 pi square 
times 10 megahertz by 10 gigahertz that is 10 to the minus 3 right so and how much is this this is 40 times 10 to the minus 3 <coughs> or 0 0.04 radians okay so in every i mean i'm just taking some number but this number is uh, likely to be quite small in most uh, real implementations uh, basically if you uh, what it says is if you get up signal for one period if you get one up pulse right the vcu output phase will change by some amount and that amount will be something like this how much is 0 0.04 radians in degrees <coughs> about 2 degrees like 57 uh, I mean 2 to uh, uh, 2.5 degrees or so basically 57 degrees is the radian right. So this uh, the output phase will increment by 2 radians in every step that is basically what it means okay. Now depending on uh, uh, the step that is available from your phase selector it may be incrementing by I mean it may be providing you let us say 0 0.1 degree steps not likely but let us say if it does then you can simply implement this step to the nearest uh, quantization level right. This comes out to be uh, 0 0.04 radians you calculate whatever number of degrees it gives you and then uh, you can simply pick the phase corresponding to this. More likely the phase step may be bigger than this okay. In that case what you do is you accumulate enough of these until it crosses that quantization level. So let us say the phase steps are here there there and so on. So, you look at when this uh, increment crosses that quantization level and then increment the phase whenever it crosses that okay. You understand I mean this is just like standard quantization. So, if you are counting like more finely than the quantization step you count many steps until you cross the quantization level and if you are counting uh, uh, less finely or more crudely than the quantization step if the quantization step is finer then of course in every step you can update it by the quantization. But anyway the only <coughs> difference is that if you implemented just like this this number is not quantized okay in reality it is quantized. So, all that you have to do is to quantize phi out properly that is all that is there in principle right. Is this idea clear? So, uh, the proportional path changes the phase by some fixed amount in every step in response to an up pulse. The integral path is different it has the second difference to be constant whatever it is we can make the discrete time model considering the phase at the ends of uh, each clock cycle you will get some discrete time equation okay. Of course, this will still give you some uh, phase in very fine resolution right because you have both the uh, proportional path which gives you steps of phi bb and you have integral path which gives you this uh, T s by tau ratio as well which is also a very small number right. So, you will get uh, very finely uh, I, I mean uh, this phi out which changes by very fine increments okay. Now, your uh, phase selector will have some uh, uh, resolution. What is the resolution? That is basically the resolution that you uh, deem to be sufficient for your application right because whenever you have quantization you will never settle to one phase it will probably be banging between two neighboring phases at least and you make sure that that jitter is small enough for your application and then you do not want to have a resolution like that is very poor. You cannot have let us say one quarter cycle resolution that is if you are not in the middle you are off by one quarter that is too crude right. You will have like few degrees then typically you you do this computation digital computation and then you pick the nearest quantized phase the exact implementation we can discuss later but that is the idea behind a digital CDR okay. Yeah it can be anything I mean if you do not implement this this uh, digital implementation will always be after deserializer not the serializer. So, after the deserialization right because this accumulator and so on you cannot implement uh, at high speed. But in principle let us say you did this whole thing at uh, the full speed uh, that n will be 1 right because then in the very next one probably you can make the correction. But that is not likely so you will have the deserializer and then this n will be more than okay. So, we will continue from there think about this. Now importantly you have to keep in mind that this kind of thing right this is also providing frequency correction okay just think about how it does that right because our original uh, uh, clock and data recovery circuit with the VCO if uh, VCO was originally oscillating at a slightly different frequency than the input it will still provide the correction right. In fact that was the idea you have two uh, transmitter and receiver but with no forwarded clock the frequencies can be slightly different there and here and this will correct itself and that is true here also this clock ref 
is not necessarily at the input uh, frequency. Just think about how the frequency gets corrected in this case. Okay. So, if you have any questions, we can discuss it uh, tomorrow.